Sixty, later known as the Empress Dowager, was born in 1835, during the reign of Dao Gong, in the 10th month of the 15th year of his rule. Cixi was one of the emperor's concubines and gave him a son in 1856. In 1861, after the emperor's death, this boy became the new emperor and she assumed role of co-empress dowager alongside the emperor's widow. Today, we will look at the extravagant, luxurious life of the China's Empress Dowager Zizi. Zizi fully appreciated the joys and luxury that living in the palace gave. Despite the difficulty of losing her husband when she was still a young lady, as well as her continual fixation with state issues, her way of life was very similar to that of the great majority of past emperors in that she loved the luxury and everyday pomp that went along with her high station. Zizi was likewise obsessed with the idea of beauty, and because of her special political position, she was able to enact any plan or regime that would satisfy this compulsion. Zizi's Luxurious Lifestyle The Empress Dowager spent a lot of time at the Summer Palace, a vast complex with a marble boat erected in 1888 with funds actually intended for the construction of a contemporary navy, which is located on the outskirts of Beijing. Her court had an annual operating budget of $6.5 million. She held banquets with 128 courses, 30 different kinds of desserts, and meals including fried lotus and magnolia petals, duck tongues, and stuffed melons to commemorate her birthdays. She also released 10,000 caged birds. The Empress Dowager amused herself by ordering her maids to compete in slapping games and by creating the game Eight Fairies Travel Across the Sea. She slept on a brick bed heated by fire, slept on a pillow filled with tea leaves and rose petals, and took pills made from crushed pearls. She once asked the hairdresser to replace two hairs that had been unintentionally pulled off her scalp by the hairdresser. She used to clap her hands at gatherings to get everyone's attention before asking whether anyone needed to go to the bathroom. Ziti's Eating Habits She consumed human's mother's milk in an effort to maintain her youth. Mandarin sweet and sour was supposedly her favorite meal. In addition to the imperial kitchen in the palace, which served the emperor's many concubines, Zizi had her own private kitchen, known as the Western Kitchen. It was separated into five sections, a meat section, a vegetarian part, a section for rice, buns, and noodles, a section for snacks, and a section for pastries. More than 400 different types of pastries, 4,000 distinct dishes, and uncommon delicacies like bird's nests, shark's fin, and bear's claw that would be made by the Western Kitchen staff. The Private Railway of Zizi in Her Own Royal Park Li Hangzhong, a well-known politician, general, and diplomat, proposed constructing an exclusive road railway in the Western Garden, the Royal Park situated to the west of the Forbidden City, in order to earn Zizi's support for expanding the nation's railway network. The 1,510-meter railway connected Zizi's dining hall, the Palace of the Quiet Heart in Beihai, to her home and hall of ceremonial phoenixes in Zonghong-e. Fashion The Empress Dowager applied spots of cherry rouge to her cheeks and lower lip and coated the rest of her face in white cake makeup. The nails on her third and fourth fingers were longer than four inches. She didn't trim her hair or bind her feet. Each year, 160 bolts of silk, satin, and gauze were needed to produce her wardrobe. Empress Dowager Zizi, her art of living, a $5 million exhibition in Hong Kong, featured samples of the Empress's facial creams, soaps, skin bleach, stone massage roller, hairpins, hairdresses, and gold nail covers. The Empress was well-renowned for her love of dressing up and photography. More than 100 remaining images of Zizi wearing more than 30 distinct extravagant gowns and garments have been saved by the Palace Museum in Beijing. She had jewels, jade, and gold hairpins strung throughout her hair, 
and she wore silk garments adorned with fine pearls. Zizi was also devoted to Buddhism and discovered that its teachings met her need for spiritual direction. Zizi was also most worried about her own mortality. To that aim, she staged the Wan Shu Festival celebration, a ceremony honoring her continued longevity. Given that Wan Shu Festival was only supposed to be conducted on an emperor's birthday, her decision to hold such a festival indicated both her wish to live a long life and her ambition to stay in power. So guys, let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. For more interesting content, give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more awesome content. Have a nice day, and I'll see you in the next video.